Um, so I've seen a lot of people expressing opinions about what the ultimate endgame tanky ship build looks like, and sometimes these opinions are stated as fact, and I'll admit I've passed judgment myself at times without really having seen concrete evidence or doing enough testing of my own. So I wanted to go ahead and do a more balanced comparison between hull stacking and shield-based tanky builds on a Dreadnought, or at least maybe giving everyone one better reference point to perhaps more objectively compare and discuss those two options. This testing was done in the beta branch of Star Valor shortly before the game's coming out of early release, and it's quite possible, in fact quite probable, that things can and will be changed, readjusted, rebalanced, etc. Um, and that's great. So I'll be looking specifically at Dreadnoughts for this comparison, not because they're necessarily the best or the most fun, um, but they are, I think, the most relevant to this particular playstyle and for min-maxing tankiness in this particular way. So in the comparison between hull stacking and shield-based tankiness, uh, Dreadnought builds like the ones I'm going to show I think are the most relevant. In an attempt to keep this video from being too long, I won't be fully explaining all of the defensive tools and mechanics that are out there if you're going to do a build like this. So things like making sure your damage resistance is capped at 80%, or grabbing harder components for more equipment space, or even using a space pilot specialized pilot in your crew pilot slot to trade off other pilot bonuses to instead unlock uh, an extra engineer slot through the space pilot 60 bonus. Um, these are things that are going to be consistent regardless of which of these options are going to go, and so I won't go into too much detail about those and just focus on the differences instead. It's also worth mentioning that the gear that I'm using in these comparisons is not gear that you can get quickly and easily in the game. Um, it requires a lot of either farming boss kill missions or farming level 60 Cold Star Elites to build up the number of legendary rarity items that I'll be using in both of the builds that I'm comparing. But I really wanted to compare two more complete versions of the builds, uh, although of course these could still be pushed even farther than they are now. And finally, while I am interested in pushing tankiness sort of to the extremes, uh, I also wanted to make sure that the, the builds that I'm looking at here are realistic in the sense that I'm not just min-maxing tankiness in a vacuum. So that means you'll see me still using things like speed boosters and accounting for warp distance and um, cost and making sure that I still have all the different computers that are on and activated for doing scavenging, things like that, if I wanted to. Uh, with the goal being, you know, we're pushing tankiness pretty far, but it's still a very comfortable, playable Dreadnought build. The top speed is still decent, um, your turn speed isn't horrible, things like that. So you could certainly push tankiness to even more extreme levels if you were willing to forego a lot of these quality of life things to free up even more equipment space that you could stack, you know, whatever it is, more hull, more chargers, things like that. So at a high level, there are two main approaches to building this tanky dreadnought that I mentioned, and those are the two that I'll be comparing here. One of them is hull stacking, and one of them is shields-based builds. And I'll go into more details uh, about what each of those means now. So what do I mean by a hull stacking tanky build? Well, in Star Valor, there are a number of different sources of percentage-based HP regeneration. So these are effects that regenerate more as our maximum haul gets higher. So some sources of this, for example, are through your repair system. So here you can see um, our improved repair system is giving us 2.4% of our maximum haul, or HP, as regeneration per second. You can also get regeneration from engineer crews. So here you can see a specialized HP regeneration engineer crew. Um, Sleepy Dragon Zarenthal also has HP regeneration as part of his engineer bonuses. Um, and finally, you can also get it from, for example, Vengi ships, which have an inherent 3% HP regeneration per 5 seconds. Um, this won't really be a factor in this video, only because there isn't a Vengi Dreadnought available yet at the time that I'm making this for us to try stacking lots of equipment to do other regeneration. But it's worth keeping an eye on in the future, as it may be quite powerful. So all of these percentage-based HP regen sources scale with our maximum hull value. So that means that to be as tanky as possible, we just need to scale our maximum hull as high as we can get, 
therefore increasing both the buffer of damage that we can take and the regeneration that we're getting from these various HP regeneration sources. So we'll, we'll look at some math later, but first let's go ahead and look at an example of what a tanky hull base build looks like against um, an in-game level 60 gold star hunter fleet. So a shield-based build has a few more factors than a hull stacking build. The first of these being just your maximum base shields. Uh, unlike hull stacking, having more maximum base shields doesn't really scale anything inherently. You just have to make sure that you have enough of a buffer of shields that they don't ever go down. Because if they do, then you have to wait for shield regeneration to start again. Shield regeneration is the bulk of your tankiness. Uh, and it can be somewhat compared to the equivalent HP regeneration in a hull stacking build, as long as your shields aren't going down. Shield absorption is, in the best case, point for point equivalent to regeneration. For example, in a scenario where you're taking constant damage, like from a beam weapon, or there's just enough total incoming damage that you're always maximizing your shield absorption. However, shield absorption gear, for example, shield absorbers, uh, currently, they're straight up worse than shield chargers in terms of space efficiency for tankiness. So the only absorption that you're usually going to be getting is going to be from any Vengi shield generators and crew that might have it. So crew also have two sources of shield-based bonuses. Uh, percent maximum shields. So this can be good for maintaining or establishing that decent shield buffer just for soaking damage. And then the other one is shield absorption. So managing your equipment space in a shield-based build is sort of a delicate balance between making sure you have enough of a base maximum shield buffer to, to soak incoming damage without your shields going down, and then stacking the most space-efficient chargers you have, um, but also you have to consider some other quality of life factors. For example, Vengi chargers, while they're slightly less space-efficient, than Mark III chargers for shield regeneration, they also come with some inherent energy storage space. So it may be that you can use Vengi chargers and not need to use any batteries and still have enough of an energy bank for, for example, doing long distance warping, things like that. Um, all of this while balancing the power draw from all of these devices. So you have to also stack additional reactors to account for that power. It's worth noting that even if you're running a shield-based tanky build, you still do want some hull regeneration. Generally, this is done by just running um, an improved repair system like I have here. Uh, but this is necessary because Vulcan weapons, even though they're relatively weak, they can do some damage and they will exist. You will run into them in the end game. Uh, your hull will take damage. And you also will want some regeneration to counteract the effect of Rollo if you're going to be using him because of his 6% HP degen every 5 seconds. So let's take a look at the shield-based tanky build in action against some of those same hunter fleets that we looked at earlier.
So let's look at some of the math behind the hull stacking variant of the build. In particular, where all our regen is coming from and how much regen we actually have. So we get a total of 4% of our hull regen every five seconds from a crew that we have. So you can see Sleepy Dragon Dar Darenthal here gives us 1.2% and Miles is giving us 2.8. Um, we're of course getting the 2.4% hit point per second, not per five seconds, from the improved repair system. Um, so between these two things, it's actually a total of 16% HP regen every five seconds. With all of our hull bonuses, one superior hull reinforcement at purple quality, so one of these right here, uh, gives us a base of 375 armor, but after the bonuses, that's actually 688 maximum hull. This in turn gives us 22 hull regen per second based on our 3.2 HP regen per second total across crew and equipment. Um, at five space required for this, that gives us um, around 4.4 hull regen per equipment space that we're spending. Um, we do, of course, also get the maximum hull value from that space. A legendary hull reinforcement, um, so like this right here, gives us a whopping 936 maximum hull after bonuses, so almost 1,000 hull. Uh, and that results in around 30 hull regen per second, or 6 regen per equipment space, which is a good bit better. So let's look at some of the math behind the shield-based variant of the build. Um, so the most space-efficient shield regen is actually from Shield Charger Mark 3s. So at purple quality, these give a base regeneration of 8 per second. Um, but after our bonuses like energy control and our current engineer crew efficiency, um, we can more than double that. So we actually get 17.4 shield regen for that one equipment space. This is followed by Vengi Chargers, which give um, a modified 32.6 shield regeneration per second or 16.3 regeneration per equipment space because they are size 2 instead of the size 1 um, Mark III chargers. However, chargers also require energy, so this is something that hull reinforcements do not. So let's look at the Bengi chargers as sort of our baseline and we'll look at the, the commonly um, available purple rarity Bengi chargers just as um, our metric of comparison here to go through the math. So at our current energy control settings, one Vengi charger requires 22.2 energy per second. So this is scaled up by our shield energy control over there. So one purple Vengi large reactor gives us 307 energy generation per second after the bonuses that we have for its nine equipment space. This gives us an effective cost of around 0 0.29 um, space required per energy that you want to be able to support. So it's less than this if you have orange quality reactors, um, but let's look at purple again for just a baseline calculation. So this means that our one purple Vengi charger um, actually costs an additional 22.2, which was the effective energy cost per second, times that 0 0.29, um, space required to to generate the energy to support that. So that's an another that's an additional th around 3.25 equipment space worth of reactors due to the requ required energy. The effective regen uh, that we're getting per space is actually uh, divided by 5.25 effective equipment space. So we're really only getting around 6.2 shield regen per equipment space once you factor in the energy cost and being able to support the energy costs uh, with purple rarity gear. This gets better for purple Mark III's or for legendary rarity versions of either of those. Um, but it's already, you know, just edging out the six hull region per second that the legendary superior, superior hull reinforcements were giving us um, per equipment space. So, and it's significantly better than the 4.4 hull region per second per equipment space that purple rarity hull reinforcements were giving us. Um, that said, it's still not exactly a fair comparison since you do need to use some of your total equipment space to stack uh, a base amount of maximum shields. You can't just stack chargers, otherwise your maximum shield is too low and one burst of uh, high damage is going to break your shields and suddenly you're waiting for regen to start again and you can't utilize all that regen you've been stacking. 
So um, the amount of shield that you need as a buffer uh, is not something that's cut and dry. Really, this is something where it depends on your personal preferences of how much of a damage buffer that you want to have. Uh, in my case, I'm actually using 26 equipment space um, across a variety of shield generators, mostly because uh, the ones that I found that are, are orange rarity um, are more efficient even when they're not all the Vengi heavy shield generators. Uh, and depending on how much total equipment space you have, using some larger and some smaller size reactors or generators um, can utilize your equipment space entirely where you wouldn't otherwise be able to do it. So like I said, in my case, I'm using 26 equipment space on shield generators. And these do provide a small amount of regen, so I'm getting around 75 regen and around 64 shield absorption, which, so in the best case, this is like 139 effective regen with a total energy cost of 98.1 per second for all the generators. So again, looking at the um, essential, the, the effective equipment space cost of that energy added to the 26 base equipment space that I'm using, we're looking at an effective regen per equipment space of only around 2.5 for the generator part of the space that I'm using. So this is clearly worse than the baseline purple superior reinforcement stacking for the hull stacking um, regen. What this means is that you're gonna see worse tankiness efficiency for shield based build for the first amount of space that you're allocating for building up that uh, base maximum shield value and then you'll see much more increased efficiency after you've established whatever uh, base maximum shield buffer you want to, to have in there for the remaining equipment space. On top of the, the 10 over 10K max shields that we have, we're getting 1371 raw shield regen plus an additional 120 or so shield absorption. So you can see our shield absorption shows up here. Again, in the best case, this is effectively shield regeneration if we're taking constant damage um, for example from powerful beam weapons so like the v5b spinal mount beams the vengi death rays things like that the absorption is the same as the regeneration um, so we can get up to 149 sorry up to 1491.9 effective shield regeneration versus constant damage um, additionally with rollo um, the special crew, we can get an additional around 493 shield regen every five seconds at the cost of losing 6% of our hit points every five seconds, which we then have to account for um, through still running this improved repair system. So between all this, it means that we're getting a minimum of 1371 shield regeneration up to 1590 effective shield regeneration per second. Uh, under ideal situations. Um, but those ideal situations are actually pretty common when you're really taking lots of damage. So when we compare this to the steady 1,120 hit points that we were regenerating per second with the, the hull stacking build, um, it's clear why the shield-based build looks and does feel a little tankier in the tests that we do. But remember, of course, that we lose all of that shield regeneration if the shields ever do break, rendering us temporarily significantly weaker than our equivalent hull stacking counterpart. So at a high level, what are the pros and cons of hull stacking versus a shield-based tanky dreadnought build? On the hull stacking side, the pros are the equipment is probably a bit easier to get. There are a few total pieces that you need, so getting, for example, legendary rarity drops of those pieces should be faster, and you don't need to worry about energy for your shields. So balancing the energy usage by adding additional reactors is something that you have to worry about once your base systems are set up and running. Your effective regen scales linearly with the available extra equipment space that you have available. So there's no need to work out trade-offs between your total damage buffer and your regen like you do with a shield based build. You're equally tanky versus Vulcan weapons against any other kind of weapon. You don't need to worry about your shields ever breaking. You're equally tanky throughout your whole massive HP buffer. On the con side, overall, you are going to be less tanky in most situations. And you have more reliance on HP regen crew, so for example, Mile Prower and Sleepy Dragon Zarenthal, 
and non-special crew with HP regen are incredibly difficult to come by. On the shield base side, our pros are that you're actually going to be significantly tankier under ideal conditions, um, and that's most of the time. Finding and leveling workable crew really isn't that bad. And while some special crew, like Gene for example, are quite nice to have, you don't really need to get lucky in finding any special crew, especially if you start with Rollo and you're planning on using him. On the con side, the equipment and gearing is a bit harder. So it requires more pieces of gear overall, and ideally a fair number of Vengi specific faction gear pieces as well. Just because those Vengi reactors and chargers and generators tend to be pretty optimal for a build like this. It does require balancing energy production as you stack more chargers. You're also going to be significantly weaker if your shield ever does break. So this does happen every now and then, and in those situations, you will be much weaker than an equivalent hull stacking tanky build. And finally, if you do start with the special crew Rollo, you pretty much have to immediately unassign him and you lose out on using a different special crew that you could have started with until you're in a situation where you can actually counter his degen to be able to use him. So it does kind of hinder your early game leveling a little bit in that regard. So I did all of my testing on the Sanctuary, which you may note has actually a 500 lower base hull than the Dominance. So for the whole stacking tanky build, it might be tempting to look at the dominance as maybe being better. But when you consider that the sanctuary comes with 20 additional equipment space, assuming you have harder components, which that's enough for four superior hull reinforcements. So even at a purple rarity for those four superior hull reinforcements, you're looking at 1500 more base hull. So the sanctuary really is the best, even for a whole stacking tanky build. Uh, I was also primarily focused on the defensive strength in the comparisons that I did. So there are a lot of things that you can choose to do in the game that will make you offensively much stronger than you are in the videos that I show, but they may come at the trade-off of being less defensive. Um, and for the things that I'm showing here, as you can see, I'm still able to kill and farm the Gold Star level 60 enemies. Ravagers aren't a problem to kill, stations aren't a problem to kill. You just might be able to kill things a little faster if you wanted to trade off some of your defensive capabilities to do it. And finally, so when I was recording the footage shown here, there was actually a bug where when you used a piece of equipment like the Pirate Protector, a barrier equipment, the HP regen was actually applying to the invisible temporary buffer that you get from those barrier equipment pieces rather than applying to your hull as is shown on the UI. Um, and what this means is that it, it breaks even, assuming you manage to use up the entire barrier buffer, but in any cases where there's still buffer left on that barrier, you're actually losing out on hull regeneration for some of the time that the barrier is active. So this is currently something that makes hull stacking um, a little weaker, just because barriers are quite powerful for situational mitigation of damage um, to allow regen to continue in a, in a shield-based build. I expect that this will get fixed soon if it isn't fixed already when you're seeing this video. So what's the final verdict between hull stacking and a shield based tanky build? I think at the end of the day, both options are definitely viable, even in the face of some of the most challenging content that you can currently access in the game. From my personal experience, and this is backed up some in the math, the shield based build definitely does feel tankier most of the time, as long as you're careful to either not let that shield go down or to be ready to react if it does. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe found it informative. One of the things I really love about Star Valor is that the gameplay choices are frequently full of complex trade-offs. So these are things that aren't just strictly numerical comparisons and it's evident in the video that I've shown here and in other things. So let me know what you think. Tell me all the reasons that I'm wrong and the things that I've missed. And if you have any other tips about how you can build a tanky dreadnought uh, that I didn't include or that I'm not aware of, let me know. I'd love to hear them. Until next time.